Ethanol blend tunes are more and more popular, and over the last 10 years, both tuners and owners have seen the improvements and benefits of having an ethanol blend tune. But what does it mean? Is E85 the same as E60, the same as E30? And why shouldn't you run just straight up E85 over like an E60 tune? A lot of newer owners or people newer to tuning have seen a lot of these people online talking about the horsepower increase. They'll post their 93 octane and then their E85 results. So today, to break all that down, we're going to talk to our house tuner, Kevin Nasty. So to introduce myself, my name is Kevin Nash, I'm owner operator of K Nasty Tuned, and Jeff was kind enough to invite me to be his in-house tuner at this beautiful facility, and I, you know, ready to get my hands dirty. Cool. So first thing I want to talk about is what are the benefits of ethanol blend tuning? Obviously, we keep hearing these or seeing these high horsepower numbers. So what are the factors that ethanol has over octane to get better performance? So you start off with right out of the pump, E85 comes at 105 octane at a price of 87 octane. So that obviously, you know, sparked interest. Interest. A lot of the old heads were like, oh, ethanol is garbage. Uh, you don't want that. You know, it's a renewable energy source. Um, cheap power. Cheap power. Cool. So cheap power is great. We all like that. So as far as you as a tuner, like sitting in the seat of a car while you're tuning it, what do you see differently between like 93 and ethanol? Like what's the actual, what causes the power increase? I prefer to tune ethanol cars. Obviously, it's much easier to do. Basically, it gets rid of the detonation window. So with 93, we basically push the car, if it's capable, to where it will detonate and kind of back off to be conservative. Whereas ethanol, you can push past that limit. 93, you'll never reach MBT under full load. You'll basically have to have a cushion. Whereas ethanol, you do not have to worry about hurting the car, especially with Subarus, especially with V pistons. For sure. Stuff like that. Oh, yeah, I've blown an engine or two, so I know how that goes. Yeah. Cool. So you said uh, MBT there. So as a tuner, that's kind of like the, the, the target you're looking for, right? So MBT. Yeah. MBT is basically the target you're looking for. Basically, the engine will, will have best fuel efficiency, best power for the boost level it's at, and it'll just feel good. It'll feel strong and smooth. It'll hit. Yeah. <laughs> it'll, it'll hit, in a sense. If you're tuning on 93, you have to be safe with ignition or else, you know, it can easily run 93 in the detonation, especially what we see out of the pump nowadays is garbage compared to what it was 10 15 years ago especially with 93 i'm so old i know exactly what that's like yeah, yeah. i mean 93 93 10 years ago you could make way more power easier than nowadays they're what they mix with to help with cold start emissions and all that it definitely hurts performance yeah if you're in that spot just toss a little red bull in there it'd be just fine <laughs> it makes it fun for us when people want to do ethanol because basically we can kind of push the car to its mechanical limitations of either fuel system to turbo system, the engine, whatever. So it's easier on us. It smells good. <laughs> <laughs> An ethanol cold start in the morning. Like some corn stock. Cool. So we talked about the benefits, why it's better for you as a tuner, obviously preferring it, but what that results in is a better and more powerful tune for the customer. So what are the requirements for ethanol tuning? I guess, obviously it is a different fuel. It loads up the same way you put it in the tank, but mm -hmm. what are some other considerations when? So basically, yes, it has higher octane, but it has less power in the fuel. It's it's less combustible than gasoline. That's why it has a lower stoichiometric ratio of around 9.8 to 1 for 85% ethanol. So basically, it requires 40% more fuel volume over 93 octane because it has a lower stoichiometric ratio. It has less power on the fuel as gasoline and it's less combustible. And that's why you also, you know, can run into cold start issues. So with that 40% more fuel volume requirement on full E85, you need more fuel volume, which you need better fuel pumps, larger injectors, larger fuel line if you're looking to make crazy power. Deliver the fuel from the tank Just, to the engine yeah. faster pretty much than yeah. the NAC tank. Yep. Gotcha. You know, it's nice when we have our Cobb custom features and we can add a fuel pressure sensor so we can set up safety. So a lot of cars that come in, I see it's just insufficient on fuel flow, whether it's pumps aren't wired correctly or not enough pump with the fuel pressure, we can actually see if it's tapering off, if it's running out of fuel, and that'll be kind of the limit on the fuel system. But with ethanol in a grand scheme of things it takes more volume and most like newer import cars even domestics the fuel lines the fuel pump the fuel injectors are all pretty it's much like e85 safe. safe it's really like older cars that you have to worry about like yeah, if deterioration have, yeah if you have you know whatever line whatever submersible hose is used that can deteriorate ethanol is hydroscopic so it draws moisture and it just uh, kind of suck the moisture out of that old rubber or whatever and crack line i'm sure you can probably drop 
a picture of crack fuel <laughs> line and pumps. So yeah, we'll talk more about the hydroscopic and the considerations for choosing an ethanol tune. Yep. But I did want to ask you about living with an ethanol blend tune. So with flex fuel, flex fuel is where the car's computer or aftermarket ECU calculates the octane or the ethanol percentage to kind of choose a tune. So it is a tuner, you would tune on 93, mm -hmm. you would switch to 85 and then the car would kind of calculate the in between like the personally, E60. Personally, I like to blend it. I like to start out, do the 93, you know, keep it nice and safe and then move to E30, you know, kind of, kind of tune it there. Cause basically you're tuning, you have two maps. You have one for 93 and then one for 85. And like you said, it blends between it. But I like to work my way up because some car, you know, every car is different. You know, that's why we tune so some cars might be knock limited on E30 the same as it was on 93. So you kind of want to, don't want to have a huge jump and set the tables up wrong in between because you never know what could Just happen. verify the equations that computers Just ver through. Yeah, verify it. And yeah, it's just a sanity check. And I also like to work my way up because, you know, you get into E60 and that's where you kind of see that you're not really knock limited anymore. E60 and above, you're not really, you won't have an issue with detonation if you have correct parts, crack plugs. Oops. So even on E60, I mean, if you're making great power and you're not taxing the fuel system for every last bit of it, you know, it's almost better to stay right there. Nine times out of time, I usually run out of fuel before I even reach full E85, you know, in certain situations. Yeah. So I just like to slowly work up just so I can monitor everything. For a sure. lot of people to be conscious of time and kind of just bang things out. They just do 93, drain it, ethanol, and then send, send them out the door. But yeah. I don't, you know, I wouldn't want to do that to my own car. So yeah. that's why I try to work it up and then make just a, for a sanity check, verify everything's good. So that's with flex tuning. So obviously it's more, I guess, convenient as far as an owner mm -hmm goes because you can just throw whatever you have around you if you're like on a road trip and they don't have ethanol you just toss it in as far as ethanol blend tuning if you have a vehicle that doesn't have flex fuel support flex. like a say like a 2022 wx or a gr corolla like myself mm -hmm. you kind of have to do the calculation yourself totally so i guess uh, there is an online calculator we'll put a link in the description below of how to calculate but you pretty much just take you input into the calculation what ethanol rating you're trying to go for ethanol percentage and then it tells you how much pump 90. 85 and 93 to to put in um, i guess like um so that's one way to do it but if you were like i'm driving my car to the gas station and i need to put fuel in i know that they have ethanol here is that something that you would feel comfortable as a tuner telling an owner like yeah just like do the calculation put this much in at one pump and this much into the other and you're good to go i guess the one thing i like to do is because we're in the northeast here so we get winters and summers the blends change out of the pump from summer to winter to help with cold start emissions, yeah. stuff like that. So we'll, we'll have less ethanol in the winter all the way down. They can go all the way down to E52 out of the pump. Around October, November, I would just test what you're getting out of the pump, make sure it's not wicked low. You just use like a shaker test? Yeah, just a shaker test. Maybe bring a five gallon jug with you, yeah. fill it up, test it, make sure you're still getting that same calculation. Yes, the ECU can compensate slightly. When you get different blends between summer and winter, you definitely just want to double check. If you don't have a flex sensor, yeah, cool. if you just want to know for sure that you're getting the right ethanol out of the pump that you were tuned for, if you were tuned for E30, E40, E60, E50, yada, yada. Yeah. And, and if then, you, I guess if you weren't achieving the ethanol content, would you recommend that the owner like just use max? Use slight, slightly more, slightly, be on air on the side of caution. You can use a little bit more E35, E40 if you're tuned for E30 and that will help, you know, you won't have to worry about knock or anything. Yeah. And um, I believe like in that calculator that we'll link that also has like, you can input the ethanol content level that you have pump. currently. Yeah. And that'll help with that. Great. And your tank size. And, and as far as like other, like living with E85, like you said, like with cold starts, I guess, what, what's that phenomena that, that happens? Why, if you guys aren't familiar, you'll be starting your car. It's like mm -hmm. first thing in the morning, it's cold outside, whatever. The engine's obviously cold as well and what will happen is it'll just crank and crank and crank and crank it'll almost feel like you have, you have like a dead battery or something like that i guess what's what's that phenomena that ethanol induces that being that it has a lower stoichiometric it's less combustible than gasoline so you have to pretty much be in a fine window of not following the plugs and starting for gotcha. it to start like stock so you just have to use a lot more fuel volume than you would on normal 93 to start the car. Compensate. Yeah, that's why we have great features through Cobb that can set us with cranking and 
stuff cool. like that on ethanol. It makes it much, it makes our jobs much easier instead awesome. of chasing for tables and stuff like that. Yeah. But yeah, being that the main point is that it's just less combustible than gasoline. Gotcha. And that's why you get the cold start. Cold so just because it takes a little longer to crank doesn't mean like it's bad fuel. There's something wrong with the car. Yeah. It's literally like once it's up and running, it's like, all right, it just takes a little longer to get out of bed. Yeah. But usually you can, you know, if you got the right tables, you can set that up to start just like stock without an issue. Cool. So we talked about all the benefits as a tuner, obviously creating benefits for you as an owner. We talked about living with ethanol. If you have a flex tune, great, easy. If you have an ethanol blend, a little more work, but the benefits do come in handy. As far as the downsides, there are just a few, but what are some considerations that an owner might want to make before they go ahead and get an ethanol blend tune? I will say one that I have dealt with myself, which is availability. Make yeah. sure you can get ethanol near you. I would also test it. We talked about a shaker test. It's just like pretty much like a, a beaker or a, it's like a tube that you fill a certain amount with ethanol and a certain amount with water and then you shake it and then that shows you the content. It's kind of crazy, but that's a big one is just make sure you have it near you. Make sure that it is the ethanol content level you're looking for or just calculate it out so that you're able to put it in that calculation will link and get the right content for your tune besides availability what are some other things to consider being that it's hydroscopic so it draws moisture and like you said availability people they can be hour hour and a half from their closest ethanol station they're on empty like, by the time they get home they're <laughs> like oh screw it i'll just grab a 55 gallon drum and they get a plastic 55 gallon drum fill it up with ethanol and it'll sit for a month and then it'll have a ton of water in the fuel it's not good not good for things for uh, sure so we, we hear we've i feel like i've heard a lot about like don't let your car store or sit too long with yes, e85 yeah. in it i guess how why is like when you say it, it draws in water like the, there's like little water in the tank with that fuel i guess like what can that impact how can that impact the motor being that you're running more fuel volume as you're driving the car it will some of it can't even seep past the rings as you're driving the car and then all that condensation moisture will end up in your oil that's why i also recommend you change instead of doing 3,000 mile oil changes you go to a thousand mile and you'll even notice it'll smell it'll smell like ethanol yeah. your oil and it'll be thinner than it was on gasoline so that's definitely a consideration more often oil changes more often fuel filter changes just because it kind of breaks up stuff it can bring up stuff in the tank a lot of people you know they got 100 plus thousand mile cars and they want to go ethanol and then everybody seems to forget about their fuel filter while well, it's just hanging five years on of gunk life. just yeah, just torn up and yeah so first thing i recommend is fuel filter change doing the oil change if you're storing your car away for the winter run that ethanol all entirely out and fill it you know quarter half tank full of 93 and drive it some get all that ethanol worked out and, and most tuners will give a 93 map with like if you get like a tune yeah. for like an e60 they'll give yeah. you a 93 map or a 91 map depending just, where you are yeah just if you to, want to store it, whatever but yeah and just the third the final thing is that it just requires more fuel volume so a lot of people sometimes have run, run into a case where it'll run out of fuel flow on ethanol but it made more power on 93 because you you just don't have enough fuel flow for the ethanol mm. so you just gotta consider your fuel system overbuild it definitely overbuild your fuel system if you want to do ethanol yeah for sure if you're thinking 1300s go with the 1700s and then, the, and then there's <laughs> downside to that yeah. with scaling 90, and 93 and then low pulse with and that could be a whole different yeah. discussion so we'll get into more with kevin i, I appreciate yeah. you spending time and letting people know if you guys are considering ethanol we would love to help you out like i said we'll have some more information in the description below but if you're considering it please go to circuit com. We have a bunch of stuff on there as well. Thank you so much for your time. We will be doing more videos with Kevin very soon. And we're actually getting our dyno literally like hooked up to power it, like Today. as we speak. That's what, some noise in the background. So pretty soon we'll have some cars on there and we'll be able to show yeah. people a lot of the things we're yeah, talking about. Yeah, what I'm doing, go through the whole nine of how I start my tuning and why I ended up with this or why I made that. We run into issues, give you the whole insider. Cool. Well, if you guys have any more questions about ethanol blend tuning or flex tuning, let us know in a comment below. Thank you so much. See you.